Hello, this is Drew Jones, and this presentation will be covering the Polaris Razor. This is for Social Influence of Technology, TM350, and we will be covering uh, the, a brief history of the Polaris Razor, the company Polaris, and all of the benefits and negatives that come, go along with owning this vehicle. In 1954, Polaris was renamed to Polaris Industries Incorporated. A few years later, they created their first snowmobile, sled number two. By 1995, they hit their $1 billion in sales mark. Um, in 1997, they created their first victory motorcycle, and they also debuted uh, Polaris Ranger, which is a utility side-by-side. -side. By 2007, they had finally created the Polaris Ranger Razor, which was the first trail-capable side-by-side, which was meant for the outdoor enthusiasts and not just work. Polaris does a very good job of making all of their financials public. Uh, they break it down into the quarters of each year and they make it clear what their sales were, gross profit, operating income, and net income. As you can see, each quarter is split up with the year next to it. And when you actually use their website, they're up, they go as current as you want them to do. Our story begins with the 2007 Polaris Ranger Razor. It was a smaller unit, only 50 inches wide with a 760cc motor. It was fuel injected, which is a huge benefit out on the trail. Um, it's automatic with a uh, variable transmission. It, it's a belt driven. Um, as far as the suspension is, it had double A arms in the front with an anti sway bar. It, it had nine inches of travel. Uh, the rear was also A arms with anti sway bar and 9.5 inches of travel. The wheelbase was 77 inches and the turning radius was 101 inches. It weighed under a thousand pounds and was more than capable of anything you ever wanted it to do. The market had not really seen anything such as this vehicle to date. Its towing capacity was 1500 pounds, so you would have no trouble towing people out that were stuck. In 2014, Polaris released the XP-1000. This was a top-of-the-line machine when it first came out. It had 16 inches of front travel and 18 inches of rear travel, which no other vehicle, production vehicle had to date. Um, they, had walk, they had Walker Evans shocks, and they were anti-body mount needle shocks. They also came with electronic power steering and LED headlights. They, uh, they started out with 107 horsepower, whereas today the XP-1000 has 110 horsepower. These were really a benchmark machine, and this brought the capabilities to much more advanced. Here you can see the various options that you have with the Polaris Razor XP family. You start out with the XP-1000 with only 110 horsepower with the Walker Evans needle shocks, and then it steps up to the XP Turbo with 168 horsepower, which is a much bigger increase. And it also has Walker Evans shocks, same there. And then you can buy the Fox Edition, which has Fox internal bypass shocks that have much more, um, much more adjustment capabilities to it. And then now the cream of the crop is the Polaris Razor XP Turbo Dynamics Edition, which has electronic um, electronic capabilities in the shocks. You can adjust the valving on the fly and it is actually a remarkable machine.
This is a video that my wife took in 2016 of me and my 2014 Polaris Razor XP1000. At the time, the shocks were stock. The A-arms and trailing arms and radius rods were all stock. But this is the capabilities of a stock machine. I've been jumping like this for several years before anything finally did break, which the next day the radius rods bent on me. Polaris has done an excellent job at creating a machine that has brought the outdoor enthusiast um, capabilities to a whole new level. You can purchase a production machine, which is a small scale equivalent to a trophy truck or anything like that. Uh, do not be fooled that these are production machines and still have weak points in them. The picture here shows a highly modified machine but it is a good example of the potential that these cars have. They, they are almost race ready vehicles once you buy them off the lot. Polaris has also done an excellent job of sponsoring teams to race the Baja 1000, Baja 500, Mint 400 and other desert races. They also have their hands in side-by-side off-road races all across America. This is a four-seater platform that he has created into a two-seater, but for the desert races they work better with a longer wheelbase. And as you can see, this has a highly modified front sway bar and there's valving done to the shocks. This is definitely not just a stock unit. There's a lot of money put into this vehicle. The uh, rear suspension is completely different along with the roll cage and everything else. In 2016, a lot of recalls started coming out. Um, a lot of people were having trouble with their razor catching on fire, which is a big deal. Apparently, there was firewall issues, voltage regulator issues, and various other things. And people were losing their vehicles to fire, just as shown here. You had to bring your vehicle in, and they put new heat shields everywhere and they put a new voltage regulator in, and they put a warning label to not carry gasoline in the back of the vehicle. Uh, some of that sounds like common sense, but it's still something that companies have to consider whenever they're selling a machine like this, just to make sure that people see the sign and know not to do certain things. Another weak point to the Polaris Razor is the rear radius rods. As you can see, the tire bent here, that is the same type of brake that I have had myself. Um, they are real light, mild steel metal, and it does not really take too much to bend them when you're jumping them. Um, and then on the bottom side, you see the roll cage tweaked, which is probably from a rollover. Or maybe it just lit on that side really hard. But the roll cages are very thin, mild steel. Uh, most people recommend that you actually have an aftermarket cage installed if you plan on driving hard at all. They really, all these parts do the job if you just look for trail riding, but if you want to go a little more intense, it is highly recommended to upgrade these components. I believe that Polaris needs to come out with a version of the Razor that already has aftermarket suspension components, such as the front A-arms, the, the trailing arms and radius rods, and a stronger roll cage. You can see some of these pieces Shown in this picture. Obviously, I understand that manufacturing costs, you can't implement that without raising the cost of the vehicle, but you could offer a uh, better version of it and sell to a lot of the enthusiasts that look to go a little harder. There are a lot of people that complain that when these pieces break because they think they should be able to buy it and just terrorize it without having any issues.